Now off to Tokyo, where the Olympic Games are drawing to a close right now. Team GB matching their medal total from London 2012. They finished fourth in the medal table with 65 medals, making Tokyo their second most successful overseas Olympics after Rio 2016. Geraint Hughes still going strong at the end of a long fortnight plus. Uh, UK Sports, Geraint set a medal target range of 45 to 70 medals. They've got very close to the, the upper end of that with the delay by a year, all the mm. COVID complications. How pleased are the management with what they've achieved? I don't think it can be quite quantified yet, uh, Nick, because um, not a state of shock. I think a, a, a sort of a state of um, e extreme exhaustion is probably <laughs> sort of the the the, um, the hierarchy of the British Olympic Association and Team GB are feeling right now, and UK Sport as well. I, I think the reality is they didn't know. They had a medal range of 45 to 70, but it was arbitrary. Nobody really know how these games were going to pan out in terms of performance. Athletes have not been able to co compete uh, properly for 18 months. They, many have been training on their own without coaches or training partners. Who knew? They didn't know how, the, how other nations were going to perform here. As it's transpired, I think overall the performance has been of an extremely high standard. So that will please uh, Team GB and the BOA and UK Sport. Also, the fact is that of the 26 sports they entered athletes in, they've medalled in 18. I think that is probably going to be one of the real highlights when they do their debrief, as I think has been sort of the split of the team. More females than males ever before, 200 females, 175 males, and the and, and the medal split as well of those 65 medals, 36 won by men, uh, 24 won by women, and five from mixed gender events, where I think Team GB embraced, prioritised, and have won medals in. I think only going forward will the IOC, I think they've seen what those mixed gender events uh, have, they've pulled in uh, TV ratings around the world, not just here in, in Japan. They've been popular with the athletes, they've been popular with pretty much everybody. So expect more mixed gender events uh, over the next Olympic editions, Paris, Los Angeles, and of course, Brisbane going forward. So I think um, overall to answer your question, which I couldn't really answer at the top, having met them, I'm not quite sure what state of mind they're all in at the moment. I think it's a mixture of relief, pride, and great satisfaction. Mixed gender cycling, the Kennys would be pretty good, wouldn't they? They weren't bad. Yeah, that's the. Un I think we're under understating it a bit, aren't we? They were. They were really, really good. Um, uh, listen, I think if you can have a medal table for the Kennys. Where would they be? I, I need, I'm going to do some research on that. Where, where would they be? But with their 15 household medals, family medals, they'd be being pretty well on, on their own. Uh, in terms of what happens to them next, because clearly, you know, they've been, they've been around in Olympic Games, it seems, for, for a long, long time. They have a, a young family, which they are not seeing. They weren't able to have their son here uh, in, in Tokyo. What happens going forward? I think Laura Kenny has intimated she still has a lot to achieve on the track yet. Uh, her husband, Jason, perhaps has already made it clear before these games, he's in the autumn of his career. But perhaps with only two and a half years to Paris 2024, well, not two and a half years, but probably I think when athletes get fully back into training after a long break, it's going to be around Christmas, and you can say two and a half years to Paris. I think some athletes may decide maybe just once more. Maybe just once more. In terms of Jason Kenny's race today, his gold medal today, sensational. He said he, he even admitted himself he didn't feel he was at the level he's been previously. But if that's a man who's not at his level, he absolutely tore the opposition apart. This is him talking about how he won that gold medal today. I didn't really want to be on the front. I felt like I had a bit of a target on my back with these guys behind. Uh, so when I look back and saw a gap, I give it a little squeeze. And um, and it got bigger, <laughs> and so I just sort of went for it. Really, you know, I didn't feel like I was one of the favourites coming into the final. Um, you know, I wasn't as quick as I wanted to be in the sprint um, and team sprint. So I kind of felt like I had nothing to lose, and just put my head down and went for it. Really, um, it was such a long way. I felt like the last lap took me about half an hour. Um, but yeah, I got there in the end, and couldn't believe I crossed the line on my own still. And so to the other British gold medalists today, you're talking about mixed gender events if you had mixed sporty events where you compete at more than one thing lauren price would be a shoe in for the british team 
Oh, I'd pick her for anything. She she is the a multi-talented sportswoman. Uh, incredible. Today she won Team GB's final gold medal, final medal, the 65th of Tokyo 2020 uh, in the women's bo uh, middleweight boxing. Um, which is just an incredible, she only started boxing in 2014. Prior to that, she'd been an international footballer. She's got caps for Wales. Uh, she played club football for Cardiff City. Uh, what else has she done? She's been a kickboxing world champion. She's given Taekwondo a go. She's done pretty much everything and she's got the most remarkable, heartwarming backstory a, a, as well. Um, brought up by her grandparents uh, from three days old uh, she's talked about them with, with such sort of love and affection. It's been, again, one of those heartwarming stories that you tend to get at Olympic Games. Uh, told by her grandfather to, to shoot from the stars and if you land on the moon, who knows what you'll come back with. She's coming back from Tokyo uh, with a gold medal. And also a boxer who got into her sport inspired by Nicola Adams. What can Lauren Price do for future generations of female boxers? The women's game have come on leaps and bounds and thankfully for the likes of Nicola Adams, Katie Taylor, they inspired a lot, massive amount of, of people from uh, London. I think obviously being in the Olympics and being shown on, on TV across the world, it kind of opened a lot of people's eyes that women can actually box and they're just as skillful and technical as the boys and each each year it's grown and come on and I'm open for Paris as well, they bring more weights in. But like you said, Katie Taylor as well. She she's the one. She's um she's done it all, and she's a great role model. And uh, I kind of look up to her as well. She's very humble, and she's gone on now into the pro ranks, and she's she's doing it there, and it's getting bigger in the pros as well. So yeah, I think it's great for women's sport, and um and really excited to to obviously be part of her and I'll, to go forward. And like I said in Paris, let's hope that there's uh, more women's weights and. Uh, more girls can kind of get involved. So, Nick, I can now tell you officially that the Games of Tokyo, the Olympic Games of Tokyo, are over. They are at an end. They are officially now over. The Olympic torch has been extinguished, and that means the Games are over. The baton has been handed on to Paris 2024. These Games are over. Thomas Bach, the president of the IOC, called them an unprecedented Games, perhaps another understatement. Perhaps the president of Tokyo 2020, Seiko Hashimoto, with a typical Japanese understatement, she summed it up by saying, and now it is thank you and good night. And good night to you. Sleep well, Geraint Hughes. Thank you very much indeed.